Hi, this is Dr. Toby, host of Health and Wellness with Dr. Toby, inviting you to watch our show for this month. It's going to be a great show with Dr. Kimberly and Chad Bibb. Kimberly is a family physician at the University of Mississippi. Chad is a physical therapist in the Jackson area. They both went to school at the University of Mississippi. Kim is an assistant professor, and Chad has his doctorate in physical therapy. And we want to hear their fake journey, their life journey. They've been married 16 years. They have two beautiful daughters, and they are ministers in their church. They help do marriage seminars and health awareness seminars. You don't want to miss it. Kimberly Bibb works with me at the University of Mississippi Medical Center, and she's been an inspiration of a Christian woman, and she's going to share with you what she's learned over the years in courtship, in marriage, in raising two daughters. Chad is a young man, 43 years old, who's going to share his heart on how we can raise a new generation of African-American people who can go into the academic world, the spiritual world, and inspire people to change. This is a great show. They're going to share their faith, their focus, their family, their ups and downs, their turmoils. You will be blessed. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the show. Don't forget, Jesus is Lord. God bless you. This is Dr. Toby Moma, host of Health and Wellness. You have no reason to fail. Why? Because God said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. If God in heaven wants you to prosper, I don't think you have an option but to prosper. The question is, do you agree with him? And today we want to talk about that. I believe where you are today is the least you can ever be. God wants you to move forward, advance, progress and show increase in your life and you have the potential within you you just need to explore it and exploit it and today we have two guests on the show who are going to be sharing with us their success stories in life they've gone through tough times hard times but today they're where they are because they stuck with it and they made a commitment to succeed dr kimberly bibb is a colleague of mine at the university of mississippi medical center with family medicine department and her husband chad bibb is a physical therapist who works in the Jackson area mm -hmm. as well. So it's an honor to have them on our show. Thank mm -hmm. you once again for coming, Dr. Yes, Bibb and Dr. Kim Bibb. and Chad. Mm -hmm. What an honor to have you. One of our favorite people, been very useful to getting settled into the Jackson area since we moved <laughs> over. And they have two lovely daughters and a beautiful family. And we just wanted to talk about your past. Chad, let's start with you. So tell us about how you became a physical therapist. Because some young 16-year-old young boys in 12th grade in high school, and he's wanting to know, mm -hmm. How did he get there? What did he do? How did he make it to that point? Well, yeah, definitely. I um, The field of physical therapy is an extraordinary field um, with lots of opportunities. And I would say when I was in high school, I was one of those where I said I was going to be a doctor. Um, and that was my goal, to be a physician. And um, got to college, uh, started to early on to realize that probably was not going to be the case. Um, mainly because once I met my lovely wife here, I saw how much she was dedicated and studied and how much I oh, really? would do so. <laughs> um, at that time, which is different now, everybody was a biology major. Um, whether you were going to dental school, medical school, it didn't matter. You were a biology major. So we were all biology majors. And then as you get closer to your senior year of college, you start branching out to different things. Um, once I realized I probably was not going to get into medical school and it probably wasn't the path for me, I started looking at different things and I couldn't quite decide. Um, I graduated and Kim can remember, I graduated depressed and not knowing exactly what I was going to do with life. I felt like I was a failure and what am I going to do? I took an emergency teacher's exam. That way that allowed me to teach, mm -hmm. um, public school. You could teach for three years oh, okay. with this type of license. and. I told myself at then, at the end of these three years, I'll know what I'm going to do. So you taught biology? I taught seventh grade earth oh, science. Earth science. Um, and during that one year, I basically decided I wanted to go to PT school. Wow. And I went back to Jackson State and I retook some classes to get my GPA up. 
kind of studied the field, did some observation from other physical therapists in the area, like watching them, what do they do? And I really started to realize, hey, I could do this. You know, mm -hmm. I, I could talk to people. <laughs> I could talk to people and teach them things. So at that point, um, I got my GPA up by taking a few classes and I started the process of applying to PT school, which is a very, kind of like medical school, it's a detailed process. You, gotta have to, you have to cross all your T's, dot all your I's, but it's very doable. Um, I tell people that um, if you, know, you want to do it, you can do it. Because mm -hmm. I had to work, I had to do things differently, and then I applied and I got into PT school. So what's the exam you take to get into PT uh, school? To get into PT school, you take the GRE. Oh, the GRE, so the, okay. You take the grad school exam like everybody, everybody who's going else. to different PhD programs, okay. and they base, based on your GPA, your GRE, and other factors, interview and different things, then that'll increase your likelihood of getting in. I will say now, for anybody listening, I mentioned that we were all biology majors. Well, that's changed now. Mm -hmm. um, when I meet young people who are thinking about PT school, by the time you're a freshman, definitely by the time you're a sophomore in college, and I hate to say this, you have to decide what you're going to do. Right. And most physical therapists are kinesiology majors. Major. Um, you could be phys ed, you could be phys ed, you could be several things, but the ones that I see that do very well wow. are kinesiology majors. And like I say, I hate it um, because... When I was in school, it gave me the opportunity to decide what I wanted to do over mm -hmm. three or four years. Right. But watching the way things are now, the earlier you know, the better. So in high school, where you, you, you had to be a science major in high school. Well, in high school, you just do a general you, um, so, college prep okay. course. Um, everybody in high school pretty much taking the same kind of classes. classes okay. um, now, from my daughter's school, and some of the schools in the Jackson area, like Murrah and Provine, and I know Clinton, things have changed a little bit, where if you know you want to go into the medical field, they'll right. find little things for you to do. Mm -hmm. But everybody still does the same. In the United States, everybody still does the same college, I call it a college preparatory So like school. your sister that went into law, yeah. she basically did the same thing you did she in did the final thing. year of high school. Yes, yes, yes. Because mm -hmm. yes, okay. yes, yes, I yes. thought if you were going into arts, you have more mm -hmm. art subjects, and no, if you're going no, to no, science, no. you have more science no, subjects. No. In public schools and private schools, I'm, I'm pretty sure in Mississippi, um, everybody does the same college preparatory classes. Like I say, they've gotten much better at that. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of classmates or people that I know their children go to the school, Murrah. It's across the street right. from UMC. Mm -hmm. Well, they have programs that branch with UMC that allow kids to kind of go back and forth. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot more of those things. Science mm -hmm. courses. Mm -hmm. um, where you could kind of intertwine yourself already, but the basic preparatory classes, everybody's taking the same thing until you get wow. to college. Mm -hmm. But as far as the physical therapy field, once I got in the field, I loved it. School was tough, but it was satisfying because I was finally doing something I really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And I've been a physical therapist since 2003, so that's 16 years. Mm -hmm. um, did outpatient for a little while. Now I'm doing, I've been doing home health for the last four or five months, which is a whole, it's like I'm learning all over, like I'm a new grad again. Oh, really? mm -hmm. um, but that's kind of how I ended up as a physical therapist. There are so many different, one thing that I didn't learn at Tougaloo, um, and um, I try to stress the kids that come to me today is there are so many different areas mm -hmm. i mean it's you know especially After you graduate yeah yeah so especially much, yeah. especially and i'll just say especially african-american kids it's like doctor lawyer teacher mm -hmm. where there's way more than that there's more engineers there's speech therapists there's occupational therapists there's you know it's mm -hmm. so many different areas you you can go into and i just sometimes i get amazed of the number of college students that come to me and their mind are, is set on doctor, teacher, lawyer, you know what I mean? I was like, there's like... Now, so you went to the University of Mississippi medical, for, for the physical therapy yes, department. Uh -huh, uh -huh. How many years is that? I mean, has it changed? I know the yes, change yes, is, yes. is now a doctorate in physical yeah. therapy. When I, right before I got there, it was a bachelor, so you didn't even need a college degree. Um, you just did two years at like Heinz or anywhere, then you did two years of physical therapy. Now, and when I did it, it turned to a master's. So you had to have your bachelor from somewhere, and then you did two years of physical therapy. And then finally, they've gone to a doctorate where you still get your four years one place, and the program is three years long okay. now. It's a three-year program, and you finish with your doctor of physical therapy. Several me and my coworkers, at the assistance of the Baptists, pay for us to go back and do that final year to get our doctorate. So I do have my doctorate. But okay. now you have to have your doctorate, and it's a three-year program. Mm -hmm. PT school is from, I mean, I've, I worked with the students at Mississippi College that came through the kinesiology program. PT school is typically not very expensive. 
Um, but one of the things you mentioned, we were talking earlier off camera, was the cost and how things affect people. Mm -hmm. Well, I tell kids always want to know well, how much you're going to make compared to how much I personally, I feel like if you're going in the medical field, don't even worry about it. Mm -hmm. There have been so many opportunities. Mm -hmm. Even when we were in Huntsville, um, I was working on an area called Athens, Alabama, just a little, every, a little bit every week. Well, just working in that area took away some of my student loans. Mm -hmm. um, so I tell people... So okay. there's a lot of programs to help oh, you yeah, pay yeah, yeah. off those yeah, yeah, loans. Yeah, yeah, Especially if you're willing. I can, one of my classmates um, basically went where they sent him. I think he ended up at somewhere in Louisiana mm -hmm. and um, got most of his paid off. So when you when you mention cost, I, I say, you know, I, and I only know about the medical field from my wife and myself. Mm -hmm. If you're going into the medical field, don't let cost stop you because somebody mm -hmm. somewhere is going to help you out because they're going to mm -hmm. need you. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. So tell us about the when you had the up the disappointments. How did you handle it? Um, I mean, you told us you choose you, you you went into teaching and because mm -hmm. um, there are people who have had those same disappointments and yeah. you you got back up and I you would say dusted up yourself and you moved on. So mm -hmm. how can they handle disappointment? Listening to you, the two I had two three main disappointments that I can look back on that really shaped my life. I had a presidential scholarship to Tougaloo College, um, which means oh. everything was paid for. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I lost that. So, yeah, <laughs> I, I lost that at the end of my freshman year. That was before my lovely bride got there and helped me out. But I lost that at the end of my freshman year. And so I had to kind of refocus, mm -hmm. um, recalibrate. And even when I applied to PT school, they asked me about that. Right. And after I got in, you get to know the professors pretty good. And they told me the fact but the way I explained my freshman year grades mm -hmm. and how I explained how I learned so much for the next three years, right. they were really impressed by. So the fact that I, I hate to say fell in that first year, well, I didn't fail, but having lower grades that freshman year and explaining to the, the admission committee how I refocused myself, mm -hmm. they really took to heart. Wow. Um, the second thing, when we graduated, you, you, I had classmates going to law school and going to medical, you know, doing things, and I didn't get into PT school right off. I didn't know what I was going to do, and that was felt like a, a knockdown. I was um, had to take the teacher's exam. I taught for that year. I was not in education, right. so obviously I'm teaching. I didn't end up where I wanted to be, right. Right. and so that was another disappointment. Um, again, that year of teaching changed my life. Oh, Just nice. meeting those kids, um, getting refocused about what I wanted. And so once I got into PT school, it was like full steam ahead. I can uh -huh. remember back those disappointments. Uh -huh. And if I was tired from studying, I just remembered how bad I really wanted it yeah. and just keep pushing. And then my last disappointment, when I finally got out of PT school, I failed my board exam the very first time, um, maybe like one or two points. I had bought a new car. We were in Huntsville. We were living it up. And then I had to quit my job because I failed my board exam. Uh -huh. Again, it stressed me out. Um, the benefit of that one is I was working in a job I really didn't like. Oh. Um, this is how the Lord works. I was working in a job I didn't like. I failed my board exam, so I had to quit that job. I was in the library studying to retake the test, and um, I think there was one of Kim's, one of the residents' wives was talking to me, mm -hmm. and she said, well, when you pass it this time, she might have said, if, come talk to me. Because she ran a different, she was at another type of physical uh, therapy clinic. Okay. And so when I passed it the second time around, I didn't go back to the place I didn't well, like. Didn't I like. went to talk to her, and wow. she got me at a job I really liked. So mm -hmm. those disappointments mm -hmm. at the time were so devastating. Mm -hmm. And, they wow. were, you know, you felt like, but when I look back over them, I really wouldn't change them for anything. Mm -hmm. Well, the key is that you didn't quit. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. there are people who they lose the, the scholarship. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. or they failed the boards. I don't want to do it again. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I have classmates that were like this. They didn't <laughs> pass it and not taking it again. But yeah, I. So I that's the that's the key. You did mm -hmm. not quit, mm -hmm. and that's I think a lot of people need to know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. if, uh, you know, winners never quit, and quitters never win. Yeah, right. yeah. If you quit, you're never gonna win. So mm -hmm. just keep doing what you're doing. My question was, I know you you had pressure at that point. Mm -hmm. How did you relieve your pressure? Some people. I, I personally, I go into a life of I go into a time of prayer and fasting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. If I get a problem that I don't understand, well, I just wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. I say, Lord, give me a, give me an idea what this is. Well, I, I promise you. <laughs> I mean, that's that's from from my upbringing. That's what I have to do, mm -hmm. and it's almost 
And I, well, it's not almost. I'm sure he's doing it to remind me. Because mm-hmm. anytime one of those things happen, even at that age, I just get refocused. Right. <laughs> Our prayer. There's a lot less music in the car, mm-hmm. and a lot, a lot more quiet and let, and thinking. Right, right. Um, so when the pressure was on, you know, because when you fail it, um, I asked them, when is as soon as I can, when can I take it again? They mm-hmm. said you had to wait 30 days. UMC got a notice that I had failed it. Wow. They called me and told me to wait six months. Oh, wow. I said, no, I'm taking it in 30 days. They said, wait six months. My professors got noticed that I had failed of the course, exam. Yeah. And so they told me 30 days was too soon. And so I said, no, 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 I'm <laughs> doing it. So like you said, if you can imagine the stress and the pressure yeah. during that 30 days. And, I work um, at UMC, so I know. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a lot of prayer, <laughs> fasting. Um, when I say fasting, it was typically fasting from like, television right. you know fasting from electronics or mm-hmm. maybe it was i don't know if i ever really fasted for food but i you know something that i really enjoyed mm-hmm. i took mm-hmm. away so there's definitely prayer and fasting wow. when the pressure is on and he always seems to come through for me even this mm-hmm. last year when i switched jobs mm-hmm. i mean i made a 360 maybe a 180 <laughs> i made a 180 going from outpatient outpatient is wow. more like acl injuries sports injuries and i went to home health um, just on, you know, let's try it. Let's see how it mm-hmm. goes. In the first few weeks, I was very depressed. Why would I do this? And I did it again. Went through a, Kim bought me a book. I went through a time of prayer, reading this book. Um, what was the name of that book? Um, Don't Fret. Yeah, no, uh, it wasn't Don't Fret. But anyway, <laughs> um, I got refocused, prayer. Right. I started going myself, be um, anxious for nothing. Anxious. That's the name of the book. Oh. Um, I started to get refocused in this book. And so, anyway, when the pressure's awesome. on, when the pressure's on, you refocus. I refocus. We talked yeah. about, you know, last episode, we talked about how people take the pressure and they might drink or smoke or, mm-hmm. you know, philander with women. Right. Um, I think my upbringing has taught me when the pressure's on, there's only one person that can help you, and right. that's Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, did you have any ups and downs? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I w- we just want to share because there are people who think, hey, this couple don't have any they're like rose petals that's mm-hmm. always shining and glittering oh, no. so did you yeah, have any definitely i mean in it your was career? very mm-hmm. challenging going through you know uh definitely with medical school um that was just a different whole new um atmosphere for me mm-hmm. um being having a uh, study um really all throughout the night and um just wondering if i was going to pass but um again very challenging uh, time for me um, and I guess one of the things for me, uh, once I finish medical school and residency, is where was I going to work next? Wow. Um, and just through the years, and you know, Chad had a pretty steady job after he started working for Baptist, but for me, it seemed like I was changing jobs every you know two years and mm-hmm. not having something consistent. Um, but I guess one of the biggest disappointments was something that I had always wanted to do, even when I wrote my medical school uh, personal statement, was I indicated that I wanted to have my own practice. Um, and even working in a private practice office, um, you know, during the early part of my career and just kind of seeing how things were run, again, that was just something that I always had a, a goal for me. And so I eventually did that, um, but unfortunately, um, you know, due to several reasons, primarily uh, financial reasons, I had to close my practice after two years. And I felt like that was a big disappointment. Um, I felt like I had failed. Um, I had a, a cousin who had her own or has her own practice and was does, does very well. And so I said, well, why can't I do the same thing? You know, why can't I have a good, um, successful practice? Um, I knew how I wanted to run a practice, but because it was so much to do just as a solo practitioner, right. um, it was not possible for me to continue to do that. And so um, learned a lot from that. But um, So like the bottom fell out. Mm. Right. <laughs> you wanted to keep up, but the bottom <laughs> wouldn't yeah, it just, hold up. Right, right. Um, but again, just learned a lot in terms of, um, you know, how to, how to do that, you mm-hmm. know, and I, you know, if that's something that, was an opportunity later on, um, I would have that particular experience. But um, just knowing how to manage and open, uh, start up a practice from the ground up mm-hmm. and you know manage people because I was pretty much the sole manager for my practice. Um, but just knowing how to do that now. Um, and then again, looking back and the things that I've learned and how those things are helping me now, mm-hmm. but being in a better um, place um, because even the, the doctor that 
I was with, um, Dr. Olatadi, mm -hmm. um, she had an opportunity at UMC, and I think that kind of allowed me to go in that direction right, as well. Um, and it just shows how God works um, mm -hmm. in our lives because mm -hmm. Dr. Olatadi was actually my mentor um, and my preceptor when I was in medical, medical school. school. And uh -huh. so it just kind of came full circle for me mm -hmm. um, in terms of that. And I do feel like God has me in the place that he has me in now. But, um, but yeah, it has definitely So you were been. disappointed, but you weren't like crushed to the point where you wouldn't pursue other dreams. Other dreams, right. Because a lot right. of people stay crushed mm -hmm. and hurt and mm -hmm. they hold on to that hurt so mm -hmm. long they lose the vision yeah. of the future. And I think, like Chad said, just with our upbringing mm -hmm. and um, the support that we have from our family, um, especially, you know, my parents, they've always encouraged me to just try to do my best. And if I fail, you know, it's OK, you know, mm -hmm. just get back up and just keep trying. Mm -hmm. um, and so um, just having that and then again, keeping God first um, in our lives and constantly praying and knowing that, you know, he will bring us through because he's mm -hmm. done it before. Um, those have been the things that have motivated me. You know, each time there have been disappointments, um, you know, in our, in our lives. There are a lot of young girls watching, and they're thinking, I can't afford medical school. Mm -hmm. Did you have a presidential scholarship, too? Or? Well, I did have a presidential scholarship uh, okay. to Tougaloo for okay. undergrad, but not for, <laughs> not for medical school. Um, so I did have to take out loans and still paying those loans back today. Um, but, I mean, I think it's worth it because, I mean, if, that, if that's the only loan that you have to pay back, you know, and you're doing what you enjoy doing mm -hmm. and you have reached that level of success, you know, I think it will eventually, you know, you'll eventually be able to pay those. Some loans people, off, but. so I'm just asking you, the family, did the family help out a little? Because there are different people watching. Some, mm -hmm. they think, oh, my dad and mom don't have anything. Mm -hmm. I don't want to take out 100% loans. Did you take 100% or did your family give you a little well, support? For for medical school, the expenses for medical school, then yes, I did take out 100% loans for Obviously that. Obviously, you lived at home, maybe? Um, at least well, a little um, I lived, transportation. Um, right, and they, my family definitely, financial-wise, they do bit. help. Um, even today, <laughs> I can <laughs> say that they help out. And so that's been a blessing um, to just, you know, know that, you know, just what we may think of are small things, right. you know, pay, helping to pay for gas or, you know, food and, you know, just having some extra money on the side. You know, my family has definitely been supportive right. um, in terms of that. But as far as taking out the loans for medical school, um, I did take out 100% um, <coughs> loans for that. But by having, you know, the scholarship for undergrad, that definitely helped, you know, in terms of, wow. you know, not having to pay those mm. things back. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you think of women as professionals mm -hmm. in the, because some women and some men have a problem with professional women. Mm -hmm. They think if you're a professional woman, you won't submit to your husband, you will be obnoxious, and I think I know, you know, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So you're yeah. a physician, Dr. Right. Chad is a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. You can't, you guys can tell us, What's the, is there, a, is there ever been a conflict because of the professionalism that you have? Has Chad ever said, oh, because you're a doctor, you don't want to listen to me? <laughs> no, I mean, I, I don't we, listen to I, <laughs> And how do we overcome that? I mean, do you think that's yeah. an issue? Well, I mean, I guess for us, we have not really had any major issues in terms of that. I think the fact that we do respect each other and the roles that we play and knowing that, you know, especially in the home, you know, Chad is the head of the head house, of the head of the home. And um, again, you know, just respecting him in, in terms of that. And he respects me as far as, you know, my profession, um, you know, and just, um, you know, kind of being on the same page there. I think mm -hmm. that that definitely helps and not really feeling like, you're any better than the other person. So your ambition as a woman should not be relegated because of your submission. Because I hear women who say, I don't want to become the chief executive of UMC because mm -hmm. my husband may think I'm not taking care of the family. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a conflict, ambition and submission? No, I mean, you because even both. the professional, I think you definitely can do both. And I, you know, even the professional women that I do come in contact with, mm -hmm. um, you know, there may have been some challenges along the way, but I think, again, just 
you know, knowing what your role is and respecting each other and, um, you know, communicating, working together. Um, I think, you know, it will work out, you know, mm. as long as, again, you don't feel like you're any better, um, you know, than, that, than the right. other person. But and Dr. Kim is the head of the women in medicine at University of Mississippi, so <laughs> she knows what she's talking about. But Chad, from your perspective, what do you think of those men who say, I don't want my wife to get a degree, I don't want her to become a, a chief executive or, you know, a big time doctor because it will affect our relationship? Um, I don't know. I guess I never thought about it. As you were, as she was talking, I was thinking we've been such good friends, you know, mm -hmm. throughout our courtship and marriage. Mm -hmm. We've always just been friends. Um, not a lot of fussing, not yelling. It's just we've been friends, so it's never really been an issue. Um, it, it, if anything, I think our family dynamics, where my sister's a judge, and you know, the the women in in my family and in her family, they don't. They don't take a back seat. They don't you know, take yeah, a back yeah, seat. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, nobody's taking a back seat to anything. So it's something I grew up with. Mm. Um, and your mom too was. Oh yeah, 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 yeah Always yeah. going for what she always wanted. Always going for it. She was the head of the. By the time she finished that Baptist, she was the head of a, her department. Mm -hmm. So wow. just something I think I grew up with. Like I said, my mom was the head of the department. My sister was a judge. Um, it's just something that never really bothered me. Because um, you know there are African American churches that don't let women preach. I'm just mm, saying. Mm. So a lot of people in the African American community in the church tend to, I don't think they call it second class, but they tend to want women in the background. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when you see a woman who's like chief executive at the University of Mississippi, some people are like, wow, how did she get there? Yeah, I think when you start mixing the biblical right. with the world stuff, right. it that's where it starts to get a little confusing, mm -hmm. but I mean, we studied the Bible and, and biblically, we're still a team. Right. right. Um, and the Bible says that the head is the 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 husband. the husband's the head of the home, and that's not in a more when when I read it, the context, mm -hmm. it's not in a way where it's like you do what I say, you do what I say. Mm -hmm. It's more along the lines of a command to me mm -hmm. to be to go to church mm -hmm. and for my kids to see me going to church and mm -hmm. my wife to see me studying and right. my wife to see me practicing with my girls with their with their scripture. And then when you do that, right. our pastor our pastor always preaches the woman wants to follow you. Right. It's not a thing where oh you command her. Yeah, yeah. It's not a commandment. It's like I'll follow you anywhere. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's that's. That's the direction we come from with submission and, and you know, types Ambition. of jobs and ambitions. Mm -hmm. And although I will, I, I told my pastor, I got my doctorate, but in 2007, 2008, and I told him I was ready for the wedding invitations to start saying doctor and doctor. So that was like, <laughs> that's probably one of my favorite things about getting my doctorate. But anyway, um, but no, it's never really been an issue in our, in our family, in our lives, and and I think we just we follow a biblical pattern of right. I'm the so head we'll of officially household. put it on camera, doctor and doctor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just and it's joking. an honor to have them, and they've been a blessing <laughs> to us. And we're going to come back next. We're going to talk about a few things they've gone through in life in terms of their faith walk and what their favorite scriptures are and any things that have challenged their faith in God. You don't want to miss it. Kimberly and Chad Bibb, an awesome couple. See you next week. God bless you. Mm -hmm. Bye. Wait. <laughs> that won't be fast. <laughs> 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 <laughs>